Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be covering multi-select dropdowns using Liver 3 and Select 2. Now, we are using Select 2 because you guys have asked me multiple times in the comments. It's very popular with you guys. I personally do not use Select 2 because it uses jQuery. So I prefer to use Alpine.js or maybe some other uh, JavaScript framework that kind of is a standalone uh, library that doesn't depend on anything else. But since you guys have asked, we're going to be covering it today. Now, if you don't use select two, you're using some other package. The concepts we cover today will still be applicable to you. It's kind of the same stuff, but you will maybe use a different, uh, you know, event. Okay, I will explain that once we get there. But let's get right into the video. So over here, guys, for today's example, I have already gone ahead and set up a simple drop down menu. Right now, it has no functionality, and our job is basically to make it connect to our library component. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code we have. Over here, I have an empty library component. I have named it for. And then on this side, I have my blade file. Of course, I already have installed select2. I'm not going to be covering that. I just kind of assume that you know how to install select2. But basically, I have a simple select with a bunch of options that I have hard coded. Uh, you can also load these from the database if you are interested or don't know how to do it. I, it's something I covered on my previous episode. For today's video, we're not doing that to save on time. And in order to basically make it multiple, all we have to do is on our select, add a multiple attribute. So if you add that, it will become a multi-select. And then down here, I have a simple script tag, inline script tag, and I'm using it to initialize my dropdown, right? So this is the default select to example you can actually copy the same exact example from the documentation just go in the documentation click on basic usage and if you scroll all the way down it's basically this exact same example okay i'm just using different data so uh, you know i'm not doing anything special so now that we have this as you can see guys we have this working drop down which isn't currently synced we're not storing any data so the next step for us guys is we actually need some sort of public property to store the selected values, right? So let's go ahead and do that on our component. Now, for this one, obviously we need a public property, so let's do it. You can name yours whatever you like. I've seen a lot of people use, for example, selected whatever you have. In this case, we have a bunch of, I guess, phone companies. So we can, for example, say selected companies. I'm personally not a big fan of kind of adding a selected prefix because it makes the property names too long, especially if you already have a long variable name. So the way I prefer to do it is either uh, if in our case, we were, for example, to store the IDs, let's say we had a bunch of IDs or maybe had UUIDs, I would personally name it company IDs. That's probably how I would do it, obviously, with the Lord C here. In our case, because we are just storing the company name itself, we don't have the ID, I'll just name it companies, okay? So I don't want it to be too long, but if you'd like, you can definitely go ahead and use the selected company name as well. I'll leave it to you guys to decide which is best for your use cases. So this is going to store all the selected companies for us. Now you can give it a default value of maybe an empty array, because again, we are using, going to use an array with all the values inside of it. So by default, I'll assign this to be an empty array. Okay. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and actually kind of bind it to our select using wire model. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do wire model companies. And this will go ahead and actually bind it to our select, right? Now, this will work if we have some initial values inside our company. So, for example, if I were to go ahead and copy Apple and include it over here, this will actually pre select Apple for us. So, this is still useful. We do need to add it. But it won't actually work or update our uh, company's property if I were to actually select something now from select2. And one way we can test that, guys, is we can go on our PHP file. And on, above our return, we can just do, let's say, dump this.companies. Just test it out. So if I reload now, and if I were to go ahead and select a bunch of values, as you guys can see, it's not actually sending any requests. It's not doing any updates. Nothing is happening. So this is basically the actual challenge we have to fix. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing for us, guys, is inside our script tag, we need to go ahead and listen for any change events, right? So select2 has a bunch of different events. 
and to show you guys where it is actually mentioned in the documentation, we can go under uh, programmatic control in the documentation. And if we scroll a little bit down, there is a section on events. I'm just mentioning it in case you are interested. There is an event called change, and as you can see in the description, triggered whenever uh, an option is selected or removed. Right? So basically, you, that's what we want. Whenever we add an option or remove an option, we want to go ahead and tell our library component, hey, HTC got added or removed, right? So it gets updated. So we need to go ahead and listen for this change event. And the way do we do it, there is an example over here. We just do on change and then we can pass it in a function. Okay, so that's basically exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do over here. So I'm going to get our component again and I'll do on change and I'm going to pass it in a closure if you use PHP or an anonymous function in PHP terms. And now just to test it out, we can say console log high. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it out and see if this actually works. So I'll do a quick reload and I'll open up the developer tools and we can go under console. Let me zoom in and I'll actually go ahead and add a couple of items. Well, let me remove one, I guess. And as you can see, now we get high. Okay, so it is indeed working. The drop down wasn't visible because of developer tools. So now that we are inside here, we can basically get the values that are selected and then update our uh, library component. So in order to get the values that are selected, there are, I believe, a couple of different ways of doing it. The simplest way I know how to do it is we can go ahead and use jQuery. So I can say jQuery uh, this and then call a method of val. Okay, so this will go ahead and actually get all the selected values. And we could maybe log it before we do anything. All right, let's store it in a variable so it's a bit easier. So I'll do let uh, data, I guess. And we can go ahead and log data. All right, I just want you guys to actually see what is inside this variable or this val, what this val method returns. So we can go ahead and test it out. I'll do another inspect. Let's go on the console. I'll select Samsung. And if I kind of bring this up again, we get an array or a list with Apple and Samsung, right? So basically now that we have this, we just need to tell Livewire, hey, update our company's property. Okay. So now there are a few different ways we can do this. Luckily in Livewire 3, there is an easy solution to do that. And in order to access our library component, what we can do, guys, is we can go ahead and wrap our script inline script tag with a new directive added in Livewire 3. I believe it was added in November. It's called script, except instead of being an HTML tag, it's a blade directive, just like this. And then obviously to close it, we need to do end script. And basically what this does is it will ensure this script runs once our library component has been successfully initialized. So this will give us access to basically all the metas or, or the properties on our library component. This also gives us access to a variable called dollar sign wire. This is basically our library component represented as a JavaScript option object. So we will be able to easily access it, our properties, update them, do a bunch of stuff, right? So this is the easiest way we can do it in library three. Uh, you could also do it uh, at this. This is something I covered on a different video, but with this new script directive, dollars on wire is the easiest way to go about it. Okay, guys, now that we have done this, in order to access our library component, we can do dollar sign wire. And to update a property, in this case, we need to update the company's property. And let me get rid of Apple by default. We can do use a method called set and we can kind of guess what it does is similar to the magic methods or actions we covered. It's used to set the value of a property. So in this case, I'll just put the property we want to update, which is companies. And then the second argument is the options, right? So in this case, I'll just pass data and we already tested it out. Basically data is like a list or a PHP array, right? So you will have like Apple. So we already know is the data type we want. So I'll just pass it in and that's all we have to do. Okay. So let's save this and let's go back and see if it works or not. Okay. So I'll do a quick reload. We don't need this anymore. 
So I'll just click on HTC. And as you guys can see, it actually worked, okay? We are getting HTC here, right? Because we are uh, dumping it over here. It is indeed now working. But we have another issue. So if I remove the dump and we try it out again, whenever I select an option, our select tool gets destroyed, right? Now, this is happening because whenever we perform a request, Liber tries to basically re-render the page and it destroys or removes all our select to component HTML, right? So it's re-rendering it. So in order to prevent that from happening, we need to go ahead and use wire ignore. Now, when you are using something like select to, the way it works, it, it will go ahead and add a div under our select with all its like, you know, all the HTML, this HTML. So we need to make sure this is also covered by wire ignore. And the way we can do that is we can wrap our select by a div and then add a wire ignore on the div itself. Okay. If you add it on the select, it will not work. As a matter of fact, I can show you guys that it will not work. So let's do it. I'll add the wire ignore on our select. And if I click on Apple, as you can see, it actually removed it completely, right? And uh, to show you guys exactly what I meant by that, if we open up the developer tools and we kind of find our select, I do need to reload the page for that, but let's go ahead and find it. So this is our select, right? And we have wire ignore on it, but the actual dropdown is under our select. It's actually a span, it's not a div, right? So if we have wire ignore on this, Liver will not re-render this, but it will still go ahead and remove our select, which will, of course, get rid of the dropdown. So we need to go ahead and add this wire ignore on a div or whatever, some kind of container. And now this should fix our disappearing dropdown issue. So now if I go ahead and select Apple, as you guys can see, it's indeed uh, working, right? As you can see like that. Now to make it easy for us to actually confirm that it's working, I will go ahead and make our property a URL parameter or query. So we can do that using an attribute. So I'll do URL attribute. And this will store it in the URL. So I know that it's actually up being updated. As you can see, guys, it is now indeed working. I could probably zoom in and show it to you guys. So let me zoom in. As you can see, Samsung HTC is actually being stored. If I remove one, it's actually getting updated okay so that's the basics of it guys i do like to cover one more thing before we end the video i want you guys to have a better understanding and that is regarding wire set the way wire set works by default is it will go ahead and work some similar to wire model dot live basically it will go ahead and send a backend server request and in some cases, you may not want that. So what do I mean by that? Let me open up the developer tools and go to the network tab. And if you test it out, I'll click on Apple. As you guys can see, it just sent a request. Let me zoom out a little bit. So it just sent an update request. If I go ahead and select Samsung, it sent another one, HTC, another one. So this might be something you do not want on your application. Maybe you want it to kind of be similar to the default behavior of wire model, where it's kind of passive, it's lazy, updates it. It only updates it when we, you know, we click a button or we perform some action. In that case, what you can do is you can go ahead on the set method, add a third argument of false, All right? So if you do that, it will still update it, but it will only update it on the front end side, but it won't send a request to the back end. It will only send a request when you maybe click a button or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it out again. Of course, these values are loaded again because we made our form uh, be a URL query param parameter. So it's loading it from there. But now if I go to the network tab and I remove these items, as you can see, we are not getting any network requests. Okay, so if you are interested in doing that, you don't want to send a request every time the drop down changes you can go ahead and add this false there is one more way of doing it guys and that is you can do wire dot companies you can directly access the property and set it to data that way these two are kind of exactly the same way okay so it depends on which syntax you prefer but they do the exact same thing by default this won't actually send a server request okay so if i go ahead and reload it still should work but it's just not going to send any server request 
in that case, if you actually want to update it on the backend side, you need some button or something. So in this case, for example, I could go ahead and add a button. Let's call it save. And we need to do something like wire click and call some sort of method. So in this case, I'll, I'll add a method of save and we can verify that actually our updates are, you know, the changes on the dropdown are being applied. So let's go ahead and create this method over here real quick. I'll do public function save. And we can do a simple dump this dot companies. That's pretty much it. I'll get rid of this dump here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out, guys. See if the drop down is actually working. So obviously by default, we had these selected. I'll remove a couple of them. I'll remove all of them actually. And let's go ahead and select only OnePlus and maybe Samsung. And if I click on save, as you guys can see, we can now confirm that actually it is indeed working. So that's the process, guys, for actually setting up a multiple select dropdown using select to in Liver. The process is very simple. To recap, you need to go ahead and set up a select with your options loaded. To make it multiple, add the multiple attribute. Add some sort of class or ID so you can actually initialize it in your inline JavaScript. Next step, obviously, you want to go ahead and use this new directive script to make sure it's only executed once your library component is initialized. Add the actual script tag. Initialize your select to document and then listen for this change event, right? Again, to recap, this change event is called whenever we add or remove something. So it's going to let us know when the dropdown has been updated. Then we can go ahead and use basically this code to get the selected items and use the dollar sign wire variable to actually update our data. Okay. If you don't like the dollar sign wire, I personally am actually more used to this syntax myself because it's what I used to use in LiveWire 2. But basically, they do the exact same code. You can use either dollar sign wire or at this to update your properties and again if i reload and we test it out this is still going to work as well exact same thing okay so that's the process guys hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned something new if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section below i will try to answer it if you ask on the first one or two days unfortunately we are getting way too many comments now at the, the current stage of the youtube channel so i'm not able to reply to everyone as quickly as i used to back when we had only like one or two thousand subscribers so i do apologize if i haven't replied to your comments or you have commented recently with that being said guys make sure you like the video and you subscribe if you haven't and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye